All right, welcome back, Odoers. Today we're taking a look at how to split manufacturing orders. You see, sometimes it's necessary to manufacture only a portion of the products in an MO. For example, let's say you created an MO for 10 tables. Later, you decide that you only want to produce five tables right away, and the other five are gonna be for a later date. In that situation, all you have to do is split, that's my best, I, I guess split the MO into two different orders. One to be processed immediately, and another to be processed later on. This can also be accomplished by manufacturing some of the products and creating a back order for the rest. However, it can also be useful to split an MO before any manufacturing itself takes place. As you can see, this workflow can be used for a variety of reasons. Maybe you realize you only have the space to store an additional five tables because tables are big. Or perhaps there are only enough components to produce five tables. You've run out of seating money and you need to wait for more components to arrive before producing the other five. Whatever those reasons are, Oda's manufacturing app makes it easy to split an MO into multiple smaller orders while keeping track of which MO they were created from. So without any further ado, let's split. So before we can split an MO, we need to create one first. So let's go do that now. We can actually use the example that I mentioned in the introduction, one manufacturing order for 10 units of our table product. And to create it, I'm gonna start by navigating over to our manufacturing app over here. And then we want to click on operations and manufacturing orders. Then now I could select an existing MO from the list in this page, but let's click new so that I can create a new one. So it's a little bit easier for you to see everything. So inside of our product field, we're going to type in the word table, just a table table. And then once that I did that and I click out of there, everything itself, including the build materials is filled out for the actual table. I could also achieve this in reverse by selecting the bomb first and have the product field auto populate that way. Now next, I actually need to enter 10 into the quantity because again, I talked about 10 of these units over there. And that's to indicate that this MO is being created to produce 10 tables. All right, everything at this point looks good. So it's time to confirm the MO. So we're gonna confirm it. And we're good to go right there. Now that our MO is confirmed, we're actually ready to split it into two smaller orders. So to do so, I'm gonna start by clicking on the actions button that we have over here next to the reference number. And once again, you guessed it. Here we have a few different options Then the one that we're gonna go with is splits. So let's just select that. And you'll notice we have a new pop-up over here. This is the split production pop-up window, which displays a few details about the MO in question. First off, we actually see our MO number over here. And then in this case, it's MO number is 255. It's good to remember that. Let's remember that number because it's going to come in handy into play later on. So next we see that the product the MO was created for, which is our table over there. And finally, we see the quantity the MO was created for inside of the quantity to produce section over here. And it's 10 units. So below all of these details, we see a field called split number. This is where we're going to tell Odoo how many MOs the original MO should be split into. For example, if I enter two into this field, cool stuff happens right there. So now that I've done that, two lines have appeared. One for each MO that will be created by the split because I've selected the number two. Each line tells us the scheduled date right there on the far left, the person responsible, moi, and then the quantity to produce over here on the far right for each MO. I can click on any of these fields to update them manually as well if I would like to, including like responsible and see, all of these. I just had to show you that. So for example, let's say that I actually want to produce six tables in the first order and four in the second. All I actually have to do is click on the quantity to produce field in the first line and type in the number six. And then after that we do that, I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom one, just to set it over here to four. Okay, the main thing to remember during this step is that the numbers inside of the quantity to produce column over here must always add up to the number in the quantity to produce field at the top of this pop-up. So get your calculators out if you need them. I already tossed mine earlier, so I can't even use it. Because if they don't, Odu won't allow you to split the MO. All right, everything looks good here. So let's click on that split button in the bottom left over here. And just look at that. Once that we do, the actual MO is split into two orders and we are automatically taken to the page for the first order. How do we know it's the first order? Well, in the MO reference field that we have at the top over here, you notice it's ending with a tag 001 added to the end of it. If I want to see all of the MOs created by the split, I just need to click on this back order smart button up at the top, and we're taken right there to a list where we can see them. 
The button is titled this way because Odo considers the split MOs to be back orders, even though they weren't created through the back order workflow. Clicking on the back orders button takes me to this list, as you just saw, and they're all numbered over here by their tag as one and two, because that was the split, and that's how we're going to tell them apart. And there you have it, folks. Today, you learn how to split a single MO into multiple MOs for smaller product quantities. That's all for today, but I hope to see you again real soon.